What's up guys, this is Justin coming at you again with a new video from Archangels Big Media. Today we're going to be doing the second part of the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Right after this. Alright, before we get started, we want to make sure that you uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. If you're new here, welcome, uh, and I appreciate you coming to visit our channel, and I really hope that this video is going to be informative uh, and good for you. That being said, let's jump into where we left off. In the last video, Jesus asks Nicodemus, how can I tell you about heavenly things if I can't even talk to you about earthly things? Now, he's about to get started uh, telling us about heavenly things right now. Uh, starting here with verse 13. Uh, and no man hath ascended into heaven, but he that descended from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but have life everlasting. For God so loved the world as to give his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but may have life everlasting. For God sent not his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world may be saved by him. Now, this is one of my favorite portions of scripture. See, Jesus refers to himself as the son of man. And he says that the son of man descended from heaven and then says that the son of man is in heaven. So we know here that Jesus, the, the, the phrase son of man doesn't just refer to his physical body, but who he is. Uh, in the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 7, we see that the Son of Man is a divine figure uh, that Daniel sees approaching the Ancient of Days. And uh, in the book of Enoch, we know that the Son of Man uh, existed as well before. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, the book of Enoch is not scripture. But that being said, it is still valuable information uh, to understand what this Son of Man figure is. Now, I did a more detailed video, and I'm going to put uh, a link in the description below uh, so that you can see that video about the Son of Man. Now, um, this is, uh, this is, by the way, this blows uh, the uh, oneness Pentecostal um, doctrine that Jesus is, um, that the Son didn't exist before the Incarnation. Anybody who says that the Son did not exist before the Incarnation, you can bring him right here. Because it says that the Son of Man descended from heaven. And says that the Son of Man is in heaven. So this talks about the Son's omnipresence. Um, even during the incarnation. And he says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man uh, be lifted up. Now this is a very, really uh, cool story. Uh, in the book of Numbers, the God gets angry at these rebels, uh, these rebellious Israelites, and he sends a scourge of uh, serpents uh, on them and they're being bitten and Moses intercedes between God and the people. God instructs Moses to make a snake, a snake made out of bronze and then he tells him to put it on a pole and lift it up so that everybody who looks at the serpent would be healed from their wounds. Now if you take a look at uh, an ambulance, right? An ambulance is going to have an image of a pole with a snake around it. This is where that, that imagery comes from. Now, Jesus says, just as, the son of, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so, man, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that he may draw all people to him. In the same way that the children of Israel are able to escape the curse of the law by looking at the serpent we also escape uh the curse and are healed uh, when we look to christ uh, christ 
is the redemption that God is offering his people. Look to Christ and you will be healed. Look to Christ and you will be saved. I, I love that. Now also this phrase, lift it up. Lift it up. This is a, a, a two you know, as I said before, a lot of times you're going to hear Jesus uh, using a, a phrase that, that has two meanings. Earlier uh, in the chapter, we see Jesus say, you must be born from above. And Nicodemus thinks he says, born again. Well, here we're seeing Jesus talking about being lifted up. Well, what does lifted up mean? Well, it can mean on one hand, exalted. The Son of Man must be exalted. He must be uh, praised or worshipped or honored, and he will draw all men unto him. But another way of seeing it is lifted up on the cross. That when the Son of Man is lifted up on the cross, and we see him lifted up, this is when he draws all men to him. This is... Oh, so beautiful. This passage. And by the way, this is a both and, right? It's not an either or because we worship the son of God because of what he accomplished on the cross. We lift up the son of God's name because of what he accomplished on the cross. Uh, this, is what, this is why we say, Lord Jesus Christ, the son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, right? Because of what he accomplished on the cross. So, uh, yeah, this, this text is, is just, it's a beautiful text. And he says, he goes on, he says that, um, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but have life everlasting. For God so loved the world, so to give his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but have life everlasting. For God sent not his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world may be saved by him. And he that believeth in him is not judged, but he that doth not believe uh, is already judged, because he believeth not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hmm. I love this gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now, there are some among us who when they describe the gospel, they describe the gospel in a way where you have this angry deity who is so angry at the world, at the individual sinner. He's, he's so mad at you. He's so mad at you that he wants to destroy you he wants his wrath to fall on you and so instead what he does is he projects this wrath on his son so when they read the gospel you know we just read god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son what their gospel is god so hated the world uh, that he killed his only begotten son this is uh, way outside of what John 3.16 is saying. The cross is about love. The cross is about bringing forgiveness and not bringing judgment. What is it that Jesus said on the cross? Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing, right? When the whole world took all that was evil, all that it could possibly do and threw it at Jesus, he conquered it. He conquered it when he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And uh, that's that's a big that's a big deal. So um, we're going to move on here. This is the judgment, because the light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light, for their works were evil. For every one that doth evil hateth the light, and cometh not to the light, that his works may not be reproved. But he that doth truth cometh to the light, that his works may be made manifest, because they are done in God. Here's this light and darkness language again. In the beginning of the gospel, 
John says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness was not able to understand it. Well, Jesus is, is talking now about judgment. And he says, this is, this is what judges you. Christ hasn't come to judge you, right? Jesus isn't judging you. But really, your judgment is already on you uh, if you don't believe in him. If you don't believe in Jesus, the judgment is already present and manifest. Because when the light of Christ comes into the world and you reject the, right, the light of Christ, you're preferring darkness. Their evil uh, is manifested because they shy away from the light. They shy away. They would pr rather be in their own darkness than to be in the light. They, would, they, they love their sin more than they love the light and um, the knowledge of God. Or they want to have communion with Satan and with darkness and their sins more than they would want to have communion with God and, and with Jesus Christ, who is the light who enters the world. They condemn themselves. They're, when, when, they're, when, when God finally does give judgment... The fact of the matter is their actions in rejecting the son is basically the same thing as agreeing with God's judgment. When you do wicked deeds, when you have wicked thoughts, when you have a wicked heart, you don't want light to expose it for what it is. That, if you, if you want exposure to your sins that's metanoia that's repentance if you want your sins to be exposed so that god can change you and transform you that is what christ came to do but if you know you have sins and you want to hide them away from christ you are cementing your own judgment you are agreeing with God the Father that you're wicked. That's why you've rejected Christ. Um, it's a bit of a heavy. It's a bit of a heavy ending. Um, but if this was useful for you, if this was good for you, uh, I would appreciate it if you commented below. Um, tell me how I'm doing. If you have any questions, uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. I read all of my comments and I respond to each one and an uh, intern and i look forward to seeing you again on my next video by the way i want to give a special shout out to uh, a viewer named joanne joanne you always comment on the videos you always are such a great uh, source of encouragement uh, for me and uh, there's some days that i read your comments and i go i gotta make a video because joanne wants to see it and thank you and i know there are other people uh, also who, who watch, you know, Soul Printables and, and others who comment and watch regularly. And I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your support of Archangel's Big Um, All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. You guys have a blessed day.